The human skeleton is an internal skeleton or an endoskeleton that works very closely with the muscular system in order to support and move the body. Skeletal muscles pull against bone in order to create coordinated movements. And it's also a function of protecting vital internal organs such as your heart and your lungs and some of the organs of the digestive system are protected by the skeleton. And the muscles of the body combined with the skeleton assist in other organ systems in many ways. For instance, the chewing of your food in the digestive system is thanks to muscle and bone. Um, inhalation is the contraction of rib muscles pulling against the rib bones and so on. So the skeleton is involved in many other organ systems as well. And the human skeleton is 206 bones arranged into two arbitrary divisions. One is the axial skeleton and this skeleton is sort of the central axis of the body, the skull, the vertebrae, and the ribs, whereas the appendicular skeleton refers to the bones of the appendages such as the arms and the legs. So let's take a look at the axial skeleton uh, shown here in just blue and we'll go through some of the bones of the axial skeleton. Uh, first, the skull, which is composed of many bones that encase the brain, and those bones are the cranium, and as well as the facial bones, such as your cheekbones and nasal bones, jaw bones. Then there's the vertebral column, the spinal column of vertebrae, uh, also part of the axial skeleton that ends in the sacrum and the coccyx. The sacrum is a large uh, fused plate of bones and the coccyx is the very last uh, tailbone at the end of that sacrum. We have 12 pairs of ribs that are part of the axial skeleton and these connect via cartilage to a central sternum or a breastplate. And so these bones make up the axial skeleton. The appendicular skeleton, now shown in this figure in blue, again are the bones of the appendages. And so we're going to consider these uh, by first looking at the upper body. And, and in the upper body we have the clavicle, which is this uh, long flat bone uh, that connects to your scapula. And together those two bones combined make the pectoral girdle. So the connection of the arm to the axial skeleton is the girdle, but these bones are part of the appendicular skeleton. Uh, from there we have uh, connecting via a ball and socket joint is the humerus, the large bone of your upper arm. And then we have two bones in the forearm. One is the ulna, the larger of the two, that connects to your humerus to form your elbow. And the radius, the smaller of the two, that has a twist to it and allows your forearm to rotate. Now the bones of the wrist and the hand are as follows. This, a collection of small bones in the wrist are called the carpals. And then the longer bones of the palm of your hand are the metacarpals, ending in the phalanges, or the bones of the fingers. And now taking a look at the lower body, we have two large coxal bones that together make up the pelvic girdle, which attach our legs to the axial skeleton. The largest bone in the human body is the femur, which is the large upper bone of the legs followed by a small sort of floating bone called the patella that is attached by tendons to both the femur and the lower bones but is commonly referred to as your kneecap. And then uh, there are two bones in the lower leg. The larger of the two is the tibia and then the fibula is a smaller one to the outside. The bones of the foot include the tarsals, a collection of bones similar to the carpals in your wrist. The metatarsals are the long extended bones of the foot, ending in, again, the phalanges or the bones of the toes. Now, the bone, a typical long bone, has a certain structure. It has two major parts to it. One is the extended portion, the main shaft of the bone, which is the diaphysis. And this diaphysis is, has a ca cavity inside. If we were to cut it open, we would see an open cavity that's filled with a substance called yellow marrow. Now, that yellow marrow is responsible for storing fatty tissue as an energy supply for the bone. 
The rounded terminal ends to a long bone are the epiphyses. Singular is the epiphysis. And this rounded end of the bone contains inside it the red bone marrow, which is responsible for producing red blood cells. Now, there are two different types of bone tissue to consider. The first is compact bone, and this is the bulk of your bony tissue. What you think of when you look at a bone or when you think of a bone, that outer white portion of the bone is compact bone. And it's made up of a number of repeating circular units called osteons. And these osteons I've got here outlined, one outlined in red here. You can see this circular unit. It's the functional unit of the compact bone, made up of lots and lots of these osteons. Now, bone is a living tissue. There are living cells called osteocytes arranged in these concentric circles within the osteon. And you can see those osteocytes here as these little black marks that occur in the circle. Now, the rings of osteocytes are around a central haversion canal, which contains blood vessels as well as uh, nervous neurons, nervous tissue, uh, in order to innervate and bring nutrients and oxygen to those cells of the bone. The other type of bone tissue is called spongy bone. You know, if we were to open up the epiphysis of a long bone, if we were to look inside, we would see this second type of bone tissue called spongy bone. And you can see why it's called spongy bone. It's very porous, it has lots of gaps, and it's made up of these thin bars and plates of bone. And surrounded within these porous uh, hollows around that bone are, is the red bone marrow. And red bone marrow, you can see here in this slide of uh, an actual appearance of spongy bone, it takes on this reddish appearance and is within these gaps in between the bony plates of the spongy bone. Now that red bone marrow is responsible for making all the red blood cells of your body. And it's important to remember that this type of bony tissue occurs only in the epiphyses of long bones. So only at those terminal rounded ends will you find spongy bone.